Bonito! Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Beatdown. I'm your host, Class, and my co-host, Mr. J. And we back at it again. And we would like to remind you, if you enjoy our videos, we'd like to go in the section below, like, comment, and subscribe. Hell yeah, and today, we're going to do a good one. Um, yeah, let's just get started. Let's flip this damn coin. Let's figure out who's going to make the argument. Alright. Tails. Heads, which means it is my pick first. Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> so, today we have two... Assassins? Two, first? two side No, sorry, picks. not that. We have two sidekicks. Two sidekicks, there you go. And my sidekick for today will be Bucky Barnes, also known as the Winter Soldier. Bucky no longer exists, thanks to Red Skull. There's only the Winter Soldier now. As a lot of you originally know, Bucky Barnes, you know, what, 1940s or something like that? During World War 30s, II? 40s? Somewhere around there, World yeah. World War II. Yeah. Around World War II, well, actually, I don't really remember when Bucky was created. But anyway, the backstory Bucky was, you know, you know came from around that, that era, that time frame. Mm -hmm. He started off as like a little skinny kid, you know, he's just like, he's like a little robber. He was, he was caps. Captain America's or Steve Rogers version of Robin. sidekick. Yeah. Although in the original story arc, when you know, Captain America sacrifices himself, Bucky goes with him, <laughs> and he's frozen in ice too. Only, you know, later they like brought his character back, where he's like resurrected by the Soviets, and they like you know reattached him with a metal arm. You know, they became the Winter Soldier. Yeah. But Bucky has a vast variety of knowledge as well as uh, skills. Yes, so as I've said before, Bucky Barnes, he has a vast variety of weapons as well as knowledge and experience. Um, you know, as a kid, he was like training with British commandos as well as, you know, he's trained with a bunch of different people. And with Cap. Yeah, yeah, he's also trained with Cap, has fought against Cap. Um, the Winter Soldier has fought against people like for uh, maybe not for Captain America, I do believe Black Panther, the Punisher, Wolverine. He was able to overpower a Wolverine in Berserk mode. Man, that's crazy. That's difficult. The reason why today is going to be very difficult for both of us is their weapons. Um, their weapons are known to be very basic, you know, high caliber sniper rifles. Assault rifles, blades. You got a katana blade in there. Uh, yeah, I think both of them have a katana. Yeah, they both have a katana blade. I didn't know that. I kind of figured Red Hood might. Maybe, yeah. But you know, he, whatever. Um, as far as where they keep them all, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, no. Winter Soldier apparently has a katana that he pulls out of I don't know his back pocket or something. I don't know. But um, the one distinct thing between the two of them. You know, Bucky, I believe, is gonna it's gonna give him maybe a slight edge. Is his art, uh, you know, the biomechanical art, or the metal art, whatever. Um, the, the arm has abilities, which yeah, I, I didn't know. Yeah, it comes with the yeah, it comes with an equipment of stuff as well in the mm -hmm. arm, so it, it yeah, adds it, an extra feature like a, a grenade, like a bomber, or what would you call it? A little grenade, grenade bomber. Yeah, grenade launcher. Grenade launcher. It has a grenade launcher. It has a flamethrower. Um, it is also able to release an electric shock, mm -hmm. as well as a couple other things that I can't really remember quite often. I mean, it's pretty damn strong too. It's not easily something you can cut off off of, of, of Bucky or the Winter Bucky, Soldier. Either. Bucky often uses it pretty much as defense. I mean, he uses it as his own little shield, so, you know, from bullets and you know from fists and stabbings and whatever else you know comes his way. The metal arm is definitely going to give Bucky an advantage. The fight is going to have to be up close and Bucky's going to have to keep him out in the open, away from any shadows, so you know, big open area, a lot of light, you know, well lit. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, he's probably gonna have to take that helmet off. That helmet is a, is a it's an advantage. And yeah. it's a, it can be used as a weapon, and it also gives Jason, you know, a little insight into the you know, fight. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty smart strategic device. Uh, isn't it giving that little sonar? Infrared? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does give him a chance to kind of look around and see what's around his surroundings, so he can do like a he solar, to, solar, yeah. solar. Sorry, uh, sonar. Sonar. Uh, saying all these things wrong. It's all right. I just, <laughs> but anyway, um, the fight's gonna have to be up close and personal. It's gonna have to be a brawl. Um, Bucky's gonna have to be careful, especially when Jason uses the venom. The one thing with that being said is I want to say it's, it's a temporary boost. Jason is going to be stronger significantly, but I want to say it, it's going to it's going to burn out. It's going to wear out. Um, if they are fighting hand to hand and Jason somehow manages to grab a hold of Bucky's guns, this is the interesting thing about Bucky. All his weapons have a imprinted hand grip. Yep. Where only he can use it, mm -hmm. and it's not a. It just won't fire or anything like that, or it shocks you. No, this thing self destructs. It'll blow so up. It's yeah. pretty much a miniature bomb. As soon as you touch it and you try to use it, it activates. And you know, Bucky knows that. It'll kick you away, and all of a sudden your gun blows up, and there goes you and your hand. You blow his hand. Yeah, you could blow his hand off at that moment. It could be yeah. a huge distraction, and then bam, snap his neck right at that moment. Yeah. He's using his metal arm. You know. You know, you know, Bucky could just like grab him, just grab his head and just crush. Yeah. He, just, he could literally just crush his head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could with, he, with the metal arm. Yeah. He literally possesses the strength to do it in that, you know. Bucky's power is more consistent, being that he's a super soldier. He was given, he was upgraded by the Soviets. Uh, what was he given? The, what kind um, of serum? The Infinity Serum? I'm not really sure. I'm not gonna lie. But I'm sure someone down there is gonna let us know. Uh, please do, you know, because it's always nice to have you guys like correct us, especially when we're up here. Like, yeah, I totally know what I'm talking about. And the guy is actually, you know. <laughs> so thank you. So I don't stand up here and feel like a dummy. <laughs> I'm very careful what you say. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, with that being said, um, with Bucky's vast variety of skills, experience, his weapons. And with that damn metal arm, I just think he's going to be way too strong, too experienced to be overcome by Jason or Red Hood. I will be representing DC Comics Red Hood. You want to dance? Let's dance. Now, if you guys don't know about Red Hood, let's let's run down the little simple basic situation. Formerly known as Jason Todd. Jason Todd. People didn't like Jason Todd as Robin yeah, so man. much so that they voted him to die in the comics. You guys are sick. That's messed <laughs> up. <laughs> Luckily, DC decided, yeah, we're gonna pull, we're gonna mess with you, and what's we're gonna bring him back. What's with the DC fans? You guys are just brutal, <laughs> like man. Savage, man. <laughs> You guys are not only <laughs> not only was he killed, he was killed in front of his mom with a crowbar. And like you would think that was it. No, they blew him up. Yeah, just to add a little extra touch where Batman's like, oh I'm gonna get to you, Todd, and then no, boom! Too late! But he did come back to life. Now how did he come back? Hmm, I wonder. Oh yeah, Raja Ghoul decided to resurrect the son of a gun. And into the Lavarus pit. And he became a little crazy in the process. Now a little? Well, completely crazy. Jason Todd is was at first already a troubled kid. Now coming back to life, he's demented. So much so that his whole focus was ruining Batman's life. Well, I mean, you get beat to death with a crowbar by the Joker and see if you're normal. After. Yeah, I can't imagine you waking up and going, "Wait a minute, what what happened?" I mean, <laughs> I, I gotta imagine trips to Home Depot are not fun for him. No. <laughs> and the thing about Jason Todd is that. Coming back, he became one of the most, I don't know, he just became something different, more skillful, more expertise in fighting, to a point where he actually went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batman, and there have been said rumors in comics where 
Red Hood was holding back going against Batman. In some essence, because he wasn't, he felt like he couldn't really, he didn't want to eliminate Batman. His whole argument was Batman's whole don't kill anybody and his whole, like, arrest him. Justice. That didn't work. Yeah. And, it, and they, look at it. It was a fact. J- Joker killed Jason Don. Had you just let Joker die at first, that none of that would have happened. But that's what Red Hood whole point was. But, yeah, that was with his perspective. Yeah, besides the point on that, he became one hell of an excellent fighter, so much so that he's fought a lot of people. And on top of that, he's pretty damn strong. With the Venom, he was able... I don't know with the Venom or without the Venom, but there was at a moment where he pushed Bane off of himself with using only his legs. And I'm a, that bastard's 300 pounds. Plus muscle. It's hard to push that guy. He also managed to punch Deathstroke and managed to push him back, like make him fly. Deathstroke is pretty damn strong. You can't hit an ordinary guy hitting him. That's not not great, but that's not happening. But with Venom, he took him pretty good. Top of that, he was able to overthrow over his shoulder Susie Sue, who was about apparently five, six hundred pounds. That's a lot of that's a lot of weight. What the hell is Susie Sue? It's a comic book character, apparently. She's like this really big old woman in the DC world, and he managed to throw her over his shoulder. She was huge. So, don't get it twisted. Be He's careful. got a lot on his tool belt. Be careful. You might get canceled for that. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, that's the name of the character. So, <laughs> besides the point. So, uh, he, okay, so he has a lot going on in his, on top of that, he's got all this equipment in his possession. So he, you know, he's got a lot on his favor. On top of that, the helmet is really strong in so, in so many essence. Not completely strong where it can take any type of hit, but it can take a lot of hits, including bullets. So Winter Soldier's not going to be able to just shoot, you know, Red Hood in the head. That's not going to happen. It's unlikely going to be an event where he's going to be able to shoot a target right at him. But, I mean, at the same time, let's not get it twisted. Winter Soldier has experience in military. Okay, he was fighting side by side with Captain America when he was younger. He got older and he killed a bunch of people. And he was really good at it. So there's no denying. On top of that, the metal arm is going to be a factor in this fight. Because Red Hood is going to have to do things quickly with his Venom. The Venom isn't going to last forever. Bucky, as Winter Soldier, probably could. He could probably go a whole couple rounds. I mean, he's got the formula, so who knows what he can do. He could probably go he's forever. Super soldier. Yeah, so he could probably go forever and just, at some point, wear him he's, down. Between speed, strength, durability. So there's no chance that Red Hood could really just stay as long with him toe-to-toe. Eventually, his human ability, as a normal person, is going to wear him out a little bit. He's going to get tired, and eventually, Winter Soldier could just grab him by the throat yeah, and Venom, just... The Venom's going to wear huh? Yeah, so Red Hood's best bet is to take him out immediately. The speed is the essence of this situation. Now, Jason Todd Red Hood could dodge bullets, which is pretty impressive, which gives him an upper advantage in some essence as a human ability because as a normal guy, this is going to be hard. He's fighting against a guy with a metal arm. It's not going to be an easy walk in the park. But at the same time, could there be an advantage where he could probably make that arm go a little bit off the rails a little bit. I mean, he's got a lot of stuff in his tool belt. I gotta imagine that there's like an electric sticky grenade or something he can use that kind of like twitches the arm and makes it a little hard to kind of work. Yeah. You know. I, I want to say he'll have something that'll make it malfunction. Yeah. But how long will it last? I don't know. Because Winter yeah, Soldier it, could easily take it off. It's gonna be. Te- it'll be temporary. Thing. Yeah. It's got to be a moment. But those moments are where Red Hood has to act fast. It's going to take those temporary moments of delay where Winter Soldier has to kind of take that thing off. It's going to give Red Hood a chance to kind of go for the kill. Now, Winter Soldier is strong and great, but is could he take a bullet in the head? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think once you get shot in the head, you get shot in the head. Now, nobody really can use their smoke, grenade, uh, smoke bombs in this situation because both of them have sonar or infrared kind of things where they can actually see each other. So there's no way of kind of hiding on that advantage. Um, I do believe that a flash grenade always comes in handy in a situation of a fight. Considering if he decided to throw smoke and Winter Soldier decided to use the goggles and he decided to throw the flash grenade at that moment, it would blind him. Winter Soldier would have to kind of temporarily take that moment of blindness. And then from that moment, Red Hood would probably use some kind of string to kind of grab onto the legs, pull him down, get up in midair and start shooting him, flipping all the way over while shooting a bunch of bullets at him until eventually, I gotta say, Winter Soldier is no more. That's my argument. Alright. Alright. Well, we made our case, but again, it's not up to us. 
So it is up to you two guys. So uh, let's just make the final point. What was your point, bro? My point is with his enhanced speed, strength, the consistency of his strength and his speed, as well as his experience and that damn metal arm, he's going to take right now. And my argument is is that uh, with some t temporary delays, Red Hood could take a moment to for an opportunity to take the shot and take uh, Winter Soldier down in that essence. So strength and experience versus, versus perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing and speed. Yes, perfect timing and speed. And a little bit of stealth. And a little bit of accuracy. <laughs> very little malfunction. Yeah, very hopefully very little malfunction. So we would like you guys to comment in the section below. Hashtag Winter Soldier or hashtag Red Hood. Yeah, yeah. And as Either always, way, we will see you next time. Catch you later. Peace.